Hi, today is the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, and welcome to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen now to the Word of God from Mark's Gospel, the first chapter. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent 
and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed. So that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. After his inaugural baptism and his arduous testing in the desert, Jesus began to preach in Galilee. His message echoed John the Baptizer's, but with a difference. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. It was as if Jesus said, The things that John told you to prepare for are now here with me. Listen to me and believe in me instead of the things that you have believed in until now. I am here to be your king. Jesus' words imply that there was a sort of other kingdom at work in this world, one that he came to overthrow. Today's reading from Mark chapter 1 confirms this. For arriving in Capernaum, a Galilean town on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee, with with his first four disciples, Peter, James, Andrew, and John, Jesus entered the synagogue for Sabbath worship. He was invited to teach during the service, and he accepted the invitation, and he made an immediate impression. Actually, maybe impression hardly catches the intensity of the response of those who heard Jesus teach. They were thunderstruck or gobsmacked by his words. Jesus taught so differently from the typical synagogue instruction of that time. Rabbinic sermons usually amounted to summaries of the various opinions expressed by past rabbis on the interpretation of the scripture read that day. But Jesus spoke with the authority of the one whose spirit inspired the scripture writers themselves. He would say, you have heard that it was said, but I tell you this. And the worshipers of Capernaum were amazed. But one poor man among them found himself infuriated by Jesus' presence in the synagogue. He was under the power of an unclean spirit that co-opted his voice to confront Jesus. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The divine authority of Jesus' words provoked this spirit and drew it out of hiding to challenge Jesus. This fallen creature addressed Jesus by name and revealed his identity to make itself appear his superior. It considered Jesus an intruder there in the synagogue and a threat to its domain. So it spoke not to honor him, but rather to intimidate him and to distract people from recalling his remarkable teaching. But its ploy failed marvelously. Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit As God had once silenced Satan when he was accusing Joshua the high priest, Jesus muzzled this unclean spirit and evicted it from its poor lost host. It yelped in protest. It shook the man with a convulsion. But finally, it obeyed Jesus. After all, the true king had spoken. The Capernaum congregation was even more amazed by this display, and soon news of Jesus' authoritative teaching spread all over Galilee. In Jesus, God's kingdom, his reign comes to light. Into Galilee he came by the power of the Holy Spirit, bearing the authority of his Father to destroy the power the serpent and his unclean cohorts have held over us 
since humanity's fall into sin in ancient Eden. Christ's Capernaum exorcism was just the beginning. His miraculous works, his, the healings, the forgiving of sins, the feeding of huge crowds, and the stilling of a violent storm all show us that this kingdom or reign of God brought by Jesus aims at nothing less than the complete renewal of God's creation. All that was lost through humanity's sin, Christ came to find and restore. All along, Jesus faced opposition from the rebellious spirits of darkness. In the wilderness, Satan did his worst to tempt and bully Jesus to acknowledge his right to rule. But Jesus turned a deaf ear to his lies and his lures. The unclean spirit of the synagogue was not the last to challenge Jesus through a human body and soul it possessed. But in each case, those spirits found that the sword of the Lord's holy word was too sharp and too strong for them to resist. So the evil prince of this world manipulated the religious leaders, playing on their pride and their fear of losing power to direct them to oppose and attack Jesus. In Gethsemane, Satan could almost taste his victory. He rejoiced as he watched the Sanhedrin and then the Roman governor condemn Jesus to die. He laughed at the terrible sound of each nail blow that pinned Jesus to the cross. He gloated over the Lord's dead body, and perhaps he even mocked him by mimicking the words of that exercised, unclean spirit. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But those were Satan's last laughs that dark afternoon at Golgotha. By the third day, he realized that his kingdom had come undone. Christ's four-word resurrection sermon spelled the end of Satan's rule over sinful humanity and fallen creation. Peace be with you. It means that Jesus' death has forever atoned for the sins of all people. For us, he drank the whole cup of God's righteous anger at human sin. All human justice in history is erased by Christ's holy sacrifice. There is a bomb in Gilead. Through Jesus, we sinners can stand before God forgiven and reconciled to him. And by faith in him and in his gospel, we do just that. Jesus has broken the chains of guilt and condemnation that bound us as slaves to sin, death, and Satan. In answer to the question of that unclean spirit in the synagogue, yes, Jesus did come to destroy you, and he has conquered you, and when he returns to this world, your time will be finished forever. So we live in the last days of Satan and his unclean army. He knows it. That's why he works so hard to fill this world with lies inspiring people to selfish, immoral, and violent deeds. Knowing that Christ's return means their eternal destruction in hell, these rebellious evil spirits strive to make this world a lonely wilderness, a meaningless existence, and a dark place of despair for us, that they might steal from our hearts the faith by which we worship Christ the King. But the King's proclamation of peace cannot be undone. He applies it to us as those who have been baptized with him into death to sin and resurrection to new godly life. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I face temptations with the conviction that we have already died to their power. We have been crucified with Christ through baptism, and we live each day by faith in Jesus, who loves us and gave himself for us. The love of the Lord embraces us and surrounds us, and so we embrace him and honor him as our true king. Giving up our old selfish attitudes and actions, 
We look to God's commands to show us the true ways to love our neighbors in faithful service to our God and King. We are led by the Holy Spirit who, through God's law, shows us our sin and forgives us through the preaching of Jesus' death and resurrection. Therefore, we humble ourselves to honor and obey human authorities like parents, teachers, and leaders in church and government because we recognize God's is the authority that they wield for our good. Instead of harboring anger against people who have hurt us, we go to them with forgiving hearts to gently speak with them in hopes of being reconciled. We spurn our culture's immoral attitudes towards sexuality, and we pray to the Lord to help spouses to, to remain faithful to each other that families would remain intact, and we pray for single people that they would remain chaste until they marry. We repent of the covetousness that leads us to live as never-satisfied consumers instead of the beloved children of our Heavenly Father, and we aim at simplicity and gratitude in life while we wait for our better treasures that are promised to us in heaven. Jesus' encounter with the unclean spirit in Capernaum stands as a beacon of faith and hope for us and for the whole world. Many are the times that that outlook of this world distresses us. Evil does seem to hold the reins of life and the hearts of most people. But remember, on the cross, Jesus rebuked the reign of sin, death, and Satan and he cast it from its former position of power. It may stubbornly cry out in protest and angrily convulse this creation to give the false impression that it's still in charge. But we trust Jesus, our King. He was dead, but now he is alive forevermore and he holds the keys of sin and death. And he, when he returns, will destroy our spiritual enemies forever and make his creation new and rule over us in truth, grace, and glory forever. Amen. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our King. Amen. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay.
government and power shall over all extend on judgment and on justice based his reign shall have no end his reign shall have no end no Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Holy Trinity, you are God of God and Lord of Lords. Truly, there is no God but you alone. From you and from your Son, Jesus Christ, are all things. Reveal the saving knowledge of Christ's truth to us and to all the world, that loving you and one another Together we may, be, <clears throat> we may be known by God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, whose voice was heard at Sinai and whose authority was made manifest in Christ, the prophet greater than Moses, send faithful preachers into your harvest who will be diligent to listen to your word and speak it faithfully in your name. Preserve us from false prophets who lead us away from your truth and give us ears to hear gladly the saving words of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, guard our families and homes and build them up in love. Support parents in their task of instructing their children. Strengthen those whose faith is weak and make us bold to forego convenience and security to give witness to the truths of the most holy faith with our hearts and with our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give health and wisdom to our Prime Minister, Premier, Mayor, and all who serve with them for our governance and protection. Help them to be high in purpose, wise in counsel, and unwavering in duty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son cast out unclean spirits and taught with authority. He is the great physician of body and soul. Have mercy on those who are sick, distressed, in danger, or facing any need. Especially today, we pray for Roy, and for Judy, for Kelly, and for Irma. Sustain them with patience, trusting in your merciful care, and graciously heal and relieve them as you see fit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, it has been two months since we were able to gather together to hear your word and receive your son's body and blood in the sacrament. Give wisdom to those in authority over us to see the importance of public worship even in a pandemic. Turn the hearts of any of our neighbors who may be living carelessly at this time and graciously bring an end to the spread of the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Rejoice that the Lord Jesus is your King, and thank you for being with us to worship him today. We, uh, we invite you, if, you're, if you've just joined us um, on this Sunday or recently, if you haven't already um, subscribed to our service, just push the red rectangle that says subscribe on it. You can also press the bell, which will give you notifications of our services as soon as they come online. God bless you this week. We look forward to sharing God's word with you again next time.